In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts, data, studies, and scores to help us understand post-election stock market volatility in the context of the big picture. We'll be moving quickly, so feel free to use the pause button on your video player. This is a weekly chart of semiconductors relative to the S&P 500. It is dated February 15th, 2024. Covered this chart in the February 16th, 2024 video. Point of the exercise, back in February, we had that left shoulder, inverted head, right shoulder look. And after that, from the bullish pattern, semiconductors outperformed significantly. Since then, they've come back. And they have somewhat of a concerning relative look on November 14th, 2024, something that we have to keep an eye on. If we look at the same relative chart on November 14th, SMH relative to SPY, it also has somewhat of a concerning look. And if we strip away the other moving averages and focus on the black 250 day, and then if we even go further and strip out price and just focus on the 250 day moving average, it helps us illustrate a point. The trend in January of 2022 was more susceptible to a rollover, which aligns with this flip from a positive slope in Q4 of 2021 to a negative slope of that 250 day in early 2022. If we go to the present day, upper right-hand corner of your screen on November 14th, 2024, you can see the trend in the present day is stronger than it was in January of 2022. It doesn't mean that we ignore the vulnerable look here and the vulnerable look here, but what it does mean is that the strength of the trend in mid-November 2024 allows us to be a little bit more patient than we would have been here in 2022 based on the look of these charts. It's also noteworthy that if we take this relative chart, SMH relative to SPY, and get rid of the denominator, looking at SMH in isolation, and then we compare the trend in the present day to Q1 of 2022, and we're looking at the 20-day moving average in blue all the way out to the 250-day moving average in black. This is that concerning look where the fastest moving average, the 20-day in blue, slices relatively quickly through the entire moving average cluster, price drops below the cluster, and then it can't retake the cluster here, and then it fails. It's not what we had earlier in 2024. Look at all this white space that we had here between the 250-day moving average, the 225, and the 200 in gold. Contrast that with this look here in early 2022. This, too, is telling us we can afford to be patient to see how this weakness in SMH plays out, while at the same time, keeping an open mind about the weak look that we do have on these relative charts. Something else that can help us make better decisions in the coming days and weeks on the relative chart of SMH, SPY, but this time we're using an anchored volume weighted average price chart. We also have several reference points in the area. Number one, all of these colored lines, which are the anchored volume weighted average price lines, for the most part, they continue to slope upward indicative of an uptrend. Having said that, the shorter term anchored volume weighted average price lines are starting to flatten out, indicative of a weakening relative trend. Thus far, if we draw a trend line on the ratio from here to here to here to the present day, on November 14th, intraday, we're holding in a logical area. We also had that left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder and now that formation over here is starting to fall apart. The reference points that we have in the present day go from where the ratio is on November 14th all the way down to this blue line here, the anchored volume weighted average price line tied to this peak here late in 2021 before the bear market started. This is also relevant, the low in October of 2022. Moral of story. Concerns would increase if the ratio moves into this area down here below this downward sloping line. This is your gray area in here as long as you stay above this blue line. And concerns about the entire rally, since this is a risk on ratio, would increase significantly if this ratio moves into this area here. So far, this chart, this chart, 
and the slope of the 250-day moving average, they're all telling us to try to remain patient and see how things unfold, but to do so with a flexible, unbiased, and open mind. When you have these indecisive looks, especially on the relative charts, it can be helpful to look at Ichimoku cloud charts. In this case, we'll look at the weekly chart of SMH, the cloud chart, in isolation. There's a lot going on here, but it's easy to understand. And as a reference point, you can use these bullet points up here that will appear on the next slide. Back to the slide of SMH, chart dated November 14th. You can see blue and red down here in 2020 after the COVID low. Blue crosses above red right here. And in the S&P 500 down here, good things happen. Conversely, blue drops below red here relatively early in calendar year 2022. And bad things happen in the S&P 500. Then we go back the other way. Very late in 2022, early in 2023, blue back above red. And you can see good things happen in the stock market. We have this little bit of an indecisive look in here. We never get the cross below. And once blue starts to separate from red here early in 2024, once again, good things happen. During the week of November 14th, we are trying to reestablish that positive look with blue back above red. Now that may or may not get nailed down by the end of the week, but so far so good. It's also a good sign that the green span is well above price here, which is not what we had over here as price was falling through in early 2022. This is a lagging span. You can see it's lagging in the present day. Concerns would increase if we got a weekly close down here, especially for more than one week below the ratio. But we don't have that yet. Now let's take the same concepts and port them over to a ratio chart. This is growth stocks, SCHG is in George, relative to VTV value stocks. It's a weekly chart. You can see in 2022 here, we get that negative cross where blue drops below red here. Bad things happen in the stock market. We're in risk off mode. We get a clear and sustainable cross the other way in early 2023. And the stock market once again does well. Get that indecisive look here late in 2023, and then we start to break away here, and good things happen in the stock market. Similar to the last chart, but again, this is growth stocks relative to value stocks. We're trying to reestablish that full bore bullish look this week, and it may or may not happen. It doesn't have to happen this week, possibly next week. And if it doesn't happen, we will also learn something about increasing bearish probabilities. The chart that's in front of us right now, bullish odds increase when green is above price. It is. When price is above red, it is. When blue is above red, intraweek, it is. Price is above the cloud, ratio is above the cloud, and the cloud flips from red to green. It's hard to see on your screen, but that is happening. For a very short period of time, we had a red cloud. Now we're trying to flip back to a green cloud. This really doesn't look anything like this over here early in 2022, because in 2022, during the bear market, value stocks significantly outperformed growth stocks. And under that scenario, green below price, it was. Price below the cloud. The ratio is below the cloud. Cloud flips from green to red. See out here. This is a lagging span. The cloud is leading. That is what happened. The cloud out here flips. Moral of the story here. If we compare the present day using these bullet points and these bullet points, and compare and contrast mid-November to the bearish flip here in 2022, the present day really doesn't look anything like February and March of 2022. Similar situation with the S&P 500 weekly cloud in isolation early in 2022. Blue and red are together. It's that indecisive look. The slope is down. Blue drops below. The lagging span is below price. Price drops through the cloud and eventually the cloud flips from green to red. It's not what we have at all in the present day. We're checking all of the bullish boxes on November 14th. Green span above price. It is. 
price above red? It is. Is blue above red? It is. Is price above the cloud? It is. Is the cloud green? It is. This really doesn't look anything like this concerning period in here in 2022. Now, if we flip over to the cloud of XLK, the tech sector for the S&P 500 in isolation, you can see price-wise we've been consolidating. It's been weak, but this is a good sign. We have nailed down the cross where blue goes above red. Bullish odds increase when blue is above red. We have that. Green is above price. We have that. Price above the cloud, it is. Cloud didn't even need to flip from green to red because it stayed green during this entire time, which is indicative of consolidation within the context of an existing uptrend. Had a nice cross here that's similar to the present day, another cross here in Q1 of 2023, and this cross blue above red doesn't look anything like the negative cross that we got in 2022. Let's stay with a weekly cloud and now let's look at a relative chart. Small caps, which have been improving relative to large cap growth. If you objectively look at the bullet points up here, really not checking bullish boxes. Let's go through the bullish boxes. Is green above price? It is not. Is price above red? It is not. Is blue above red? Negative. We can't check that box either. Is the ratio above the cloud? It is not. Has the cloud flipped from red to green? It's really not even close to doing that on November 14th. For us to get more interested in small caps relative to large cap growth stocks, we'd like to see this look here morph into something more like this, this transition period here in 2023 when the tech sector flipped from a concerning look to a constructive look. And that may happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Let's go to an even longer time frame, the monthly cloud, and compare XLF financials, the financial sector of the S&P 500, relative to SCHG large cap growth stocks. This trend, from a long-term perspective, has a lot of work to do. You can see this move here. This is a massive counter trend move within the context of a longer term downtrend. Compare the look of the ratio down here in 2024 to this list and this list. Yes, financials have been outperforming in recent months, but until proven otherwise, we would treat this as a counter trend move within the context of an existing downtrend, which means if we decide to sell growth stocks and buy financials and this trend holds, then we're gonna to have to do two things right. We're gonna to have to know when to buy XLF, and more importantly, we're going to have to know when to sell it when the downtrend resumes. Now, we're not making any assumptions about what's going to happen next, but the chart in front of us is a long-term downtrend. Similar situation here, but there is some significant improvement on the chart of XLY consumer discretionary relative to SCHG large cap growth stocks with one exception. All of this improvement down here, which is relevant, real, measurable, we can see it, measure it, and put it in a model, all of it's happening within the context of a downward sloping and relatively thick red cloud. What does the thickness of the cloud tell us? It tells us that resistance in this area has the potential to be relatively strong. So once again, to get more interested in consumer discretionary stocks relative to large cap growth stocks, we would want this look down here to make a move like this, where it goes from this look down here to this look over here as the S&P 500 tech sector did in 2023. And you can see after that, really good things happen for a long period of time. And there's no question, no debate here. XLY has been outperforming SCHG for several months now. But within the context of a bull market, clear uptrends. One of the easiest ways to make sure that you're disappointed at the end of the year is to overtrade. And one of the easiest ways to trade within the context of an uptrend and the context of a long-term bull market is to chase counter trend moves within the context of downtrends. 
we look at the same ratio, XLY, consumer discretionary relative to SCHG, large cap growth stocks, you can see as far as the moving averages go, forget price out of this, we have a full bore bearish look. Again, there's clear improvement here, and yes, it is possible that we could fill this white space. But once again, if you chase this counter trend move, if you did it here, you have to decide when to get in and when to get out. If you hold SCHG in this window here, you don't have to do anything except stay with the leader. Is it possible that this trend will flip? Absolutely, positively, yes, and we're open-minded about that. We just need to see more. And if we come back up and think about what we're looking at, this is a ratio chart. We really have to be careful that downtrends on ratio charts don't distract us because if we look at XLY in isolation, it looks fantastic. It's a full bore bullish look with blue, the fastest moving average on top, red, the slowest moving average, the 200 day on the bottom. We've had a long term period of consolidation, an inch a week, a bullish breakout, and we're holding above this level. That's a good sign for XLY. It's also a good sign for SCHG, SPY. XLK. Consumer discretionary is a risk on asset. The fact that it's improving, we like to see it. XLY in isolation looks good. SCHG is in Georgia on November 15th. Full bore bullish look. It looks good. We have this short period of consolidation for several months, and now we're above that, printing new weekly closing highs. Again, we don't want to get too cute selling this asset and chasing this asset. In this environment, with an uptrend and a clear uptrend, we're gonna stick with the long-term winner. The one that has the higher probability of being higher in one year, three years, and five years. And based on the look of this chart, that's not XLY, it's SCHG. We also have a nice looking chart of XLK, which too has been relatively weak since peaking on a relative basis in July of this year. But in isolation, it looks fine. November 14th, full bore bullish look. Price is above all the moving averages. Blue is on top, red is on the bottom. The slopes of all the moving averages are up. This looks like a strong uptrend, similar to this look in here. And the market did well for a long period of time. If this, in isolation, starts to morph into something more like this, and really more like this, concerns would increase, but we just don't have that yet. We also noted on this chart, the weekly chart of small caps relative to growth stocks, that small caps were still in a relative downtrend. However, in isolation, the laggard also looks good. Full bore bullish look, we're still holding above this level here. The longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move you can expect to get when you either get a bullish breakout or bearish breakdown. Right now, this is a bullish trend, and we're trying to nail down a bullish breakout. Another chart to help us remain patient, if we look at the S&P 500 in isolation using the 20-day moving average in blue all the way out to the 250-day moving average in black, it too has a full bore bullish look. This really doesn't look anything like this concerning transition here, this bearish transition in January, February, March, and early April of 2022. And after this, bad things happen for a long period of time. Again, it's not debatable. The tech sector has been a laggard since July of this year, but if we look at it in isolation, it looks fine. Blue, the fastest moving average on top. XLK on Thursday was trading above an upward sloping 20 day moving average. That doesn't look anything like this bearish rollover look that we had in 2022. We're not making any assumptions about what happens next, but this recent consolidation in recent weeks is occurring well above an upward sloping 250 day moving average in black. Dean Christians and Sentiment Trader have produced several helpful studies in recent weeks and months. We'll show a portion of one of them so we're not stealing their thunder. The QQQ liquidity premium indicator triggered a risk on signal. The triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, a year later, the mean returned 20.4%. 
the median return just a hair under 21%, and maybe most importantly, every single case, the triple Qs were higher. And maybe just as important within the context of a bull market, Performance of the triple Qs in the historical cases, really not all that impressive looking out one week, two weeks, one month, and two months, helping us keep realistic expectations about how markets operate in the real world. In the historical cases, patient investors were rewarded in a big way, which simply helps us better understand the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. And this look here, and this excellent return, looking out 12 months, aligns with some of the charts that we have in the present day. SMH is your market leader, so it's already done this, but a lot of your tech and growth charts, especially on a relative basis, look like they're still trying to form this right shoulder over here. So this right shoulder would align with the potential for possibly mediocre returns or mediocre relative returns, looking out one week to two months. And it would also align with once SMH broke out in October of 2023 and cleared the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders pattern, it killed it, which would also align with the possibility of something like this happening. Regardless, it's extremely important that we trade the chart in front of us. And the concept of trading the chart in front of us also applies to data sets and model scores. November 14th, 2024, trend strength model, double 100s. Also extremely favorable secular volatility model scores aligning with the concept of strong longer term trends, giving us room to be patient. And typically, patience pays off in bull markets. And the only way that we can use methods like this effectively is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.